Hello everyone. Today is the 17th of March 2024. I'm going to talk about something that is completely different from what I normally talk about. And I feel even a little bit guilty about dealing with this because with all the problems in the world, in Ukraine and in Gaza and everywhere else, it just seems that this is um, not terribly important and uh, perhaps we shouldn't uh, waste our time doing this. But uh, I'm just wondering what is going on. Let me start at the beginning. It concerns, first of all, the case of Michelle Obama, Obama and then uh, Brigitte Macron. Um, a little bit of a connection there on the stories. And then, of course, what is happening now with the, the Princess of Wales, Catherine. And um, why do we always, uh, the press always calls her uh, Kate or Kate Middleton. Surely, I mean, you know, she is the Princess of Wales, you know, at least um, Prince uh, Princess Catherine or Princess Kate, if you like. But anyway, this is totally different. But let me let me start at the beginning. It's not that I am fascinated by the stories, but I, I, I have a question mark here about not necessarily what is happening, which all could be nonsense, and it probably is, but uh, why it is happening. I'm going to go back a few months ago. All of a sudden, in the media, we heard that for some reason that uh, Michelle Obama, you remember this, Michelle Obama uh, was not a woman, something like that. Okay, And if you remember the story, it, it, it ran for about three or four days and then it died off completely. So it was just for a very short period of time. The um, they started saying this, and then they were putting uh, they were talking about a video with Joan Rivers, the comedian. You remember, um, she had just finished. You know that in America, uh, if you uh, perform a civil marriage, you used to be a judge, but now it could be practically anybody—a doctor, a teacher. Joan Rivers, the comedian, had officiated in marrying uh, two men, two gay men, and uh, as she came out, the press was asking her all sorts of questions, and then they said, well, now that uh, we had the first black president, do you envisage a time when we will have uh, the first gay president, something like that. This was the press asking her questions. And without a moment of doubt or anything, she just said, we already have one. Um, Michelle Obama is trans, something like that. And everyone went, what? <laughs> and she said, yes. They probably, because she was getting on in years and she was a comedian. I, I don't think that the press knew what to do with it. They disregarded the whole thing. But when this is uh, quite a few years ago, but when this a few months ago, when this came up in the press, one of the things that they were showing was this thing that Joan Rivers had said. Then there were pictures of a young Obama with this guy there who this guy with a moustache but if you wanted you could say well yes she he uh, looked perhaps a little bit like Michelle but I mean you can't take these things seriously because anyone can do anything with a photograph nowadays we know that so that that wasn't really terribly important but also you saw a video of Obama talking to the press and saying oh yes we talk about it at home I talk about it at home all the time with Michael and the press was saying who's Michael anyway all these things came together three or four days 
the Obamas went on holiday to, I think it was Marbella in Spain or something, and then the, the, the story died off. Fine. Now, what I thought about it, I thought it was, you know, just a little bit of nonsense, but um, th th what I thought at the time was perhaps that it there was an inside, an inner... Um, struggle between perhaps the Clintons and the Obamas and uh, you know being for power there who was who was to hold the strongest uh, hand in politics because there is a little bit of a uh, friction there and I thought this is probably politics and the Obamas are being told in one way or another that uh, be careful, don't stray too far because we can actually make your life a little bit difficult, something like that. I thought it was a, a sort of a political thing going on. All right, so forgot all about it. Now I am listening to many channels in France and um, one of them that I follow where do I have him? Um, let me just see. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I was. Uh, I I had misplaced my my note here. One of the um, channels that I follow is one by Francois Asileno, who is a. Um, He's been in politics all his life. He was one of the people working very closely with uh, President uh, Mitterrand. And uh, anyway, he's talking about this um, um, this thing, of, uh, this uh, what President Macron said a few days ago, yes, probably more than a week now, about sending French troops to France. Now, this is a serious channel. And uh, he's he's saying he's he's saying that this is um, a lot of the French press um, came up against it, and uh, uh, he says that uh, we have to take this seriously because um, we all know by now that the war between Russia and Ukraine is not just a war between Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine is the field of operation where operations where the fighting is going on but we know that uh, say the west or nato or the united states whatever okay this war is not just between obviously between russia and ukraine and actually since there is the ukrainian armed forces so many people are dying there that uh, that uh, to think that now you can put French troops there on the ground where the Ukrainians are. It's it's something that uh, it's, it's, it's just, it cannot be accepted. And he makes the point that um, President Macron is disregarding all democratic methods of going through the General Assembly and so on. He's making a political point. And, uh, and he says, what worries me is that the the president has said himself openly, and he has said it more than once, that he suffers from depression, grave uh, depression. And perhaps that explains the ups and downs and the ups and so on. You know, he says one thing today, then he disregards it the next day and so on. He says, um, I think that the president should submit himself to a medical examination, a serious one, unlike so, all presidents before him that had to produce an official report every year about their health, physical and mental, he says Mitterrand did it, um, that he has to actually, we have to have a, a, a an official report of his health. Um, because France has nuclear weapons, and uh, this is a serious matter. And uh, and uh, he says, um, um, 
let's see, um, he should submit to medical examinations which should keep the French people informed. Um, that is what his predecessors have always done. Um, and he says that um, the Article 68 of the Const Constitution should be used if the president is not well, um, that uh, the deputies and senators must now launch the, uh, the procedure for the dismissal of the uh, of uh, of the the president and the uh, Article 68 of the Constitution, which provides precisely that a president can be dismissed in the event of a manifest breach. Um, of, of his uh, being uh, his state of being incompatible with the exercise of his duties of his mandate um, and he says the the president has nuclear weapons at his disposal and um, anyway he goes on um, and uh, he's he's rather worried you can see and he's calling the French people to to actually ask their deputies and senators for this inquiry into the health of the president. So I'm watching this and then lots of things come on in different uh, videos and things about the First Lady, Brigitte Macron. I'm not interested in Brigitte Macron at all. I mean, I never click on, you know, personalities or film stars or whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm just not interested. But it keeps coming up, all these things. And then to another channel that I go to, uh, also, I think, a rather seri uh, serious channel for news, they are talking about uh, Candace Owens of the United States, her video on Brigitte Macron. So, and they're discussing it. So I thought, and they are translating her video, and I thought, well, since they are talking about her, and this seems to be so important, let me go to Candice Owens and see, watch her video and see what she says. Well, Candice Owens starts by saying that First of all, that, <laughs> that Brigitte Macron was born a man and that she transitioned at the age of 30. Now, she says, this is not, I haven't dreamt it. I was watching, she says, I was watching, um, uh, I was reading the Daily Mail and uh, I was taken aback by a headline that said proof that the first lady was not born a man. The true story of Brigitte Macron, a controversial background is revealed as a, uh, those who say that she was born a man as a wicked slur by the French far right to damage the election hopes of her husband. That was what the article was about. And so she said, I thought that that was very strange. It was the first time that I saw something like that, proof that the first lady was not born a man. And she said, What's, what, what is going on here? Who says that uh, she was born a, a man? Well, apparently there has been an investigation for quite uh, by quite a few um investigative reporters in France and they published a report which is actually very very long and very detailed uh, and this has been going going on since 2017 uh, very detailed uh, proving to their minds at any rate that this was the case and uh, Candice Owen says so I, I started looking and investigating myself and says, okay, this is the situation. 
Um, Bridget Macron is now 70 and uh, the president is 46 years old. Apparently they met, as we all know, when uh, he was, in some cases it is said 15, others 16 and others 14 years of age. Uh, she was his teacher and he was very good and they fell in love. Okay. She was married at the time and she left her husband, divorced her husband, her husband even though she had three children with, with him, three kids. Okay, so um, when this report came out in France, officially the initial reply was to say, of course, to deny it, and they presented two photographs as evidence. The first is a photograph of Brigitte um, as a little girl. She is sitting on her mother's lap, and then, and it's just a little girl, and then on the far left of the picture is a boy. And Owens, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what Candace Owens says. She says that this boy, actually, who is probably about six or seven years older than the little girl, actually looks very much like her. I mean, you know, that you can see that it could be the same person at an older age. The little girl has a totally different face. Okay, so that was that. But then they supplied one more photo, so two photographs. And the second photograph is of a girl probably uh, in her first communion uh, uh, dress. Um, and um, Candace says, um, I was taken aback because I thought that that photograph looked uh, too new to be the first communion of that little girl whenever that happened. Well, apparently, sure enough, that photograph of her as Brigitte produced as evidence uh, was uh, debunked and uh, apparently is the photograph of her daughter uh, during her f at her first communion day. So if this is going on with these photographs that are a little bit odd, she says, what else is there? The investigative reporters who produced this uh, re report uh, say they worked with uh, ge genealogists and published their report in six issues. And this is what they published. Um, she was, according to them, born Jean-Michel and lived as a man for 30 years and father fathered three children and then transition at the age of 30. Um, the question is, Candace asks, why don't they why doesn't she just produce pictures of herself during her first 30 years? It would be quite simple to say, look, this is me when I was five, this is me at school, this is me at university, this is me getting married, they are not producing any of these photographs. Um, at the same time, the brother, she says that that boy in the picture, in the origin, in the first picture, that that boy was her brother. Well, where is he? Um, they can't find him. Uh, the genealogist can't find a single trace uh, that um, Jean Michael ever existed. So what they have is, and they search for the for, for it, but they can't find it. So what we have is, we don't have uh, 
Jean Michael during we, we have these 30 years where we have Jean Michael but no Brigitte and then uh, after the 30 years we have Brigitte but we don't have Jean Michael all right so that seems to be a little strange and um, this this thing about not producing uh, pictures of herself during the first 30 years of her life seems a little bit odd okay so then a uh, she refers to a uh, an article on the telegraph uh, the um, the headline is Brigitte Macron sues women who claim she is transgender. Okay, so photographs of her life, the first 30 years, uh, have not been produced, but in response, she took the journalist to court. Uh, uh, for what? For, quote, violation of privacy and fundamental personal rights and illicit use of her image. Um, okay, so why did why didn't she provide evidence of her life, her first thirty years, and with her brother? Uh, she the, Candace maintains that look, the normal thing kind of is to call a press conference and say these are all my photographs of my life. This is me. This is my brother here. Um, yes, we look very much alike and so on, but no, um, she sued for violation of privacy and fundamental personal rights. Okay. Um, the journalists, by the way, when they were investigating this, they were certainly, um, well, they were arrested, uh, two of them. Her names are Amandine, Amandine, uh, Roy and Natasha Ray um, on July the 13th 2021 they were taken into custody um, anyway they, their telephone was taken they uh, apparently were humiliated and threatened and so on so since 2021 the French uh, public have known about this and because this happened with the arresting of journalists they became more and more interested in, in this in this affair also her husband she was married apparently she was um, she had three children she divorced and then married Emmanuel Macron well her husband can't be found either Apparently, there is uh, one, uh, he was uh, supposed to be a banker. Um, and when when President Macron was f elected, uh, even a, a magazine, Gala magazine, was trying to, you know, probe into the life of the First Lady. We all knew that she was much older than he was well that's fine you know it's their life and so on so they were trying to interview her family and her husband and so on they couldn't find him um, and the headline in gala magazine was quote as if he had never existed um Okay, then the uh, officially the official reply to that was to show a photograph with a very nice looking gentleman and and uh, Brigitte next to him. Well, apparently that was a fake too because it was a photograph of the faculty of La Providence School where she taught, and so now you can see the whole picture, and uh, it's not only them is everybody else around them so that picture could not prove that the person next to her was her husband at all he, he was a member of the faculty all right 
So, then, we know that or they, they uh, maintain that um, as a man, she, uh, he fathered uh, three children. Um, the husband was one, apparently one, André Louis, Louis Ossier. He was, uh, according to the official reply, he was the, uh, um, the deputy director of a uh, bank, a French bank in Strasbourg. Um, the name of the bank was the Bank Francaise de Commerce Extérieur. Okay, so the French Bank of um, External uh, Commerce. Okay, fine. The only thing is that there is no record of this bank having ever existed. There is no record of this bank at all. When this came to public notice, then her daughter, I don't remember her name now, um, came out and said, no, he's dead now. He was a very, very private man. He didn't want to talk to the press or anything, but he, he's deceased now. Um, I buried him in privacy, and uh, and but then there is a lot of um, uh, confusion because she gives or they give different dates in July, in September, in December. So we don't know either we don't, we don't know when he actually died there is confusion about the dates um he said she said the daughter said um i buried him in the strictest uh, privacy i adored him he was a being apart him non-conformist who valued his anonymity above everything he must be respected all right then they also officially they showed a picture of a wedding this is a, a an old picture of a wedding uh, saying that uh, there they are uh, you know her husband and herself well apparently this is also fake apparently there is this a Jean-Louis Auxier in the picture as a young man but it's not with her it's with his first wife who is a Susan Spray um, but Apparently, <laughs> this is getting terribly complicated, isn't it? But apparently, this Brigitte or Jean Philippe, or, okay, the person who fathered these three children, the mother was a Brigitte, Brigitte uh, Tragnaud, who. Um, actually is the niece of a Jean-Louis <laughs> Jean Auxier. Am I confusing you now? In other words, okay, to, 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 to summarize, what they contend in, this, in uh, this official report, this journalist, is that she was born a man. For 30 years, she was a man. He fathered three children with this Brigitte, uh, I forget the name now, okay, and um, then she, he transitioned to a woman. And that is why you cannot find the husband, you cannot find the brother, there are no pictures of her in her first 30 years. There are pictures of Jean Philippe in the first 30 years and then he ceases to exist. And there are pictures of Brigitte after 30, but not before. That is the problem. Okay, so why is this important? I don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know, but it seems to be everywhere and the channels, um, the um, uh, French channels are talking about it. Anyway, okay, so those two things, what is going on with all this, the same thing with the Obamas and the Macrons and what what is going on here? Now, for something completely different, which has nothing to do with male, female or anything like that, is the case of our... Uh, a princess, the Princess of Wales. Now, I don't follow too much, you know, just the most important things about the royal family. Um, uh, but um, there seems to be a lot of talk. I don't have a television, so I don't know what the, um, the official um, television channels are saying. But in just going to the, the, the channels that, that I watch for news, there is a lot about this fake uh, photograph. So I'm not clicking on it. I'm not, I'm not interested. It seems to me as I was looking at it, oh, a fake photograph of Kate, and not interested. So I'm just... But so happens that I actually was listening to a serious long form program um, English um, you know in the social media and uh, they, they they were talking about serious things like Gaza and Ukraine and so on and then they dealt with this thing about the Princess of Wales and I thought that's strange because I thought that it was just nonsense hearsay and so, but but um, they say no. This is this is important. What what is going on? Because we know that she was not well. That the princess had an operation, stomach operation, which is um, you know serious operation, and we knew that she was going to obviously be away and recover and so and recuperate. But. They were saying, but look, this is 80 days. This is a few days ago, so it's probably more than, it's almost 90 days. 90 days is three months. And we haven't seen her. We haven't heard from her. This photograph apparently is a fake. And, and they were talking seriously about it. And I thought, my goodness, yeah, three months is a long time. Um, of course, the, uh, it's a serious operation and so, but in three months... I don't know, perhaps coming out of the hospital or just, you know, um, some photographs or other. But um, the, the king is also not well. Um, I understand that because he's going through uh, chemotherapy and one of my eldest brother went through that many years ago and that is hard. Um you know, it's debilitating. So the fact that we are not seeing him, I'm not surprised at all. He's uh, advanced in years and he's, you know, just having this. But the thing about the princess is, you know, even though the operation was a serious one, it does seem strange that that um, we haven't heard from her or seen her or anything. And in this program, they were saying that here in England, we don't seem to speak too much about it anymore, that apparently the the, the networks have, have stopped talking about it. I don't know because I said I don't have a television, but apparently in abroad, they are talking about it. Um, and they mentioned Spain and the United States. They're continuously talking about how strange this is. So um, I thought, well, shall I go to the Spanish channels and uh, and uh, look at and see what they're saying? And they were just repeating the whole. So I thought, no, I, I don't want to spend any more time on this. But I do think it's um, it's strange. So so what is going on with all these things? What what is what is happening here? The third case with the princess has nothing to do with the first two. They're completely different, I know, but I think it's all very strange. And uh, is it perhaps that this, uh, these cases are, are 
discuss them, brought to the public attention in order for us to keep looking, concentrating and focusing on them and, and not on other more important things. I mean, that is a possibility. But it does seem strange, doesn't it? About this woman, man, man, woman, with all these things. That, what do you think of this? Perhaps, perhaps uh, you can. Uh, you know more than I do about it, and you would like to leave a comment, a serious one, if you just happen to have more information. Anyway, I just wanted to mention this. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>